for the Battle of Florida. We all thought for a long time it was going to be Boston, Tampa, Toronto, Florida. And it, that is not how it shook out. We have a Battle of Florida between the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are now on the other side of the coin in the wild card spot in the lower seating. And the Florida Panthers, after making the Seneca final, came back stronger than ever and won the Atlantic Division and are facing up against a team that got absolutely slaughtered by the last time they played them. Now, both teams are very different now. It's really interesting to see. But, Matt, how much better does Florida look in comparison to they did last time against the Panthers? Sorry, the Lightning. Oh, well, they got, like, a few more key names. And not only have those, like, they got a few key names, but they've had some names that have stepped up this season. You got guys like Sam Reinhardt. Uh, they acquired Vladimir Tarasenko, which I'd, I'd like to touch on him in a bit. But, I mean, Paul Maurice, like, he's made this team into not just a team, but, like, a formidable unit. And I think they have the potential to go to the cup final again. I love I love what you said there, Matt, that they play like a unit. Like, that, when you watch them play or your team plays against them, that's kind of how it feels. Like, they come at you in waves, and it feels like everyone's kind of on the same page. Yes, they have better skilled players at the top of their lineup but it feels like everyone kind of comes in waves and knows their role so i i think they're they're a dangerous team now like it's much different than when tampa played them last right um i do think tampa this is going to be a good series and a long series i, I don't think tampa is going to go away very easily and i think tampa is still very good but uh like you said like reinhardt kind of came out of nowhere so he's like you know a, you, a guy you have to watch now all of a sudden right and um Obviously, Kachuk, and like they're just built like killers for the playoffs, so it's going to be a lot mm -hmm. of fun. No, of course, going down the four lineup, guys like Barkov, like you said, Kachuk, Carter Verhage, yeah. Sam Reinhardt, Sam Bennett, all these guys are people that are made for the playoffs. They're a scary team. Even the bottom six is good. They brought in a veteran presence in Kyle Pozo. Like you said, Matt Tirasenko was there now. Um, I think they have, what's his name? An Anton, Anton Lind Lindell. Lindell. Yep. Yeah, Lindell yep. as well. He's there. On the back end, too, like all Breckman Larson came in. Nobody expected anything from him. Played decent. That's playing decent hockey for them. Gustav Forsling is one of the randomly one of the best defensemen in the NHL. After he was a waiver pickup, Aaron Ekblad is still solid back there. They still have Brandon Montour. Nothing has changed that much from last year, and they've only added bringing like a guy like Tarasenko, for example. Now, if you look at the goaltending, Sergey Bobrovsky and I believe uh, Alex Outline. I think yep. are the are the two goalies. Sto I think it's uh, Stolar. Oh no, Stolar's, Stolar's yeah, that's Stolar's. those yeah. are the two guys that got mixed up. <laughs> yeah, I think Stolar's. Alex Lai, he's uh he's a Detroit? Red Wing now, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Yep. So Anthony Stolar's, uh, he had a 9.25 this year in 27 games played, which is pretty good. And then if we look at Sergey Bobrovsky, he had a 9.15 this year in 58 games. So they are very good. It's going to be hard to beat them. But if there is a team that could beat them. It might be the Tampa Bay Lightning, and why could that happen, Darius? Why could that happen? Because they still have a lot of pieces from their Stanley Cup um, dynasty, I guess you could call it. I know they only won two of them, but they went to three straight finals. They, they still have their core that went there, and I mean, a lot of the pieces that they've added are very good. Like Mikey Asimon, I think is his name, right? That's how you pronounce it. Anthony um, Duclair. Anthony Duclair. Like they've had like Matt Dumba, you know, him in the playoffs. Like that's going to be great to watch too. Um, they still, they've added some pieces that I think can fill in a little bit of the blanks. They're not as good as obviously pieces they've had in the past, like losing David Savard and guys like that. But they're not going to go away. Anthony Sorelli, like he's going to have something to say in the playoffs. He's a very good playoff player, like super underrated. People don't talk about him enough. Um so the lightning aren't going to go away very easily. Like I think, I don't know when we get to our predictions at the end, it's going to be interesting. But um, I, th I think the uh, the lightning, they're still a very good team. I know they're in the wild card, and people have kind of wrote them off after they lost to the Leafs, but they're still a very good team. Yeah, the, the Leafs effect. But Matt, um, how does not having Mikhail Sergachev impact this Tampa Bay Lightning team? Yeah, like Sergachev, that's a huge gap in that defensive lineup because you got guys. Well, Hedman was uh, out last game too, but he should be back for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But you 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 have to rely on some names that exactly don't have the playoff experience that this team has been through the past four or five years. Because you got got guys like Darren Radish, Nick Perbix, Eric Chernak, but you you have some inexperienced names like Emil Lilberg. Yep. Like in Lilleberg, in, in yeah. some Lilleberg, and then oh sometimes. Oh my God! Hold on, pause on bro. Yesterday when I was watching the Leafs game, I was so confused when they kept saying Lilleberg. I'm like, who the hell is that? I'm like, don't you mean Lilla Grand? It's like, no, they literally have a guy named Lilleberg. Sidebar, but yeah, Matt, it's but, it's, yeah, it's gonna be he'll tough. he'll probably he'll probably come out for Hedman. I mean, that was only, I think those were the last game pairings. 
but the the defensive a little shaky compared to Florida. But I mean, when your last line of defense is, you know, Andre Vasilevsky, you can get away with it. Of course you can. And Andre Vasilevsky, since returning from injury this year, has played a shit ton of hockey. Uh, we look at him this year, 900 save percentage in 52 games. So honestly, not the godly Vasilevsky we're used to seeing. But in the playoffs, we know he can do some fucking damage. Uh, 52 games played this year, 30, 20, and 2. So nothing to go home about. Same thing with the 900 save. But honestly, all we're looking for uh, for Vasilevsky is his playoff numbers. Last year against the Leafs, actually, nothing too, too crazy. 875. But guys, come on. You 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 look at all the numbers before that. In 21, 22, 922, 20, 2020, 2021, 937, 1920, 927. That's three years in a row. It's unbelievably good goaltending. He's going to be the difference to me in this series. Darius, do you think Andre Vasquez is the player that can turn the tide? I think he's going to be a difference in this series for all the wrong reasons for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I'll tell you why. Because the Leafs exposed him and Tampa's defense last year in the first round. So if you're Florida, just watch tape on that. You know exactly what to do. And I think it's going to play well into Florida style because they were talking about it on the broadcast the other night when the Leafs were playing the Panthers. The Panthers aren't necessarily one of the best rush teams. They'll dump the puck in, cycle, and that's how they get their goals, right? And they're really good in your zone. So if they can do that and get shots from the point on goal and create chances from there, we know that Vasilevsky does not thrive in those situations. So we saw it last year. It happened, in the, and the Leafs won that series for that reason. So um, if Florida can can do that and it kind of plays into their strength, I think that he could be a difference, but for the wrong reasons. Damn. That, that's honestly, I don't hate that take at all. But if we look at Tampa's forwards, we talked about Forrest forwards and how they are unbelievably potent. Tampa is not too shabby either. Nikita Kucherov just hit 100 assists alone, yep. uh, which is crazy. He's he's going to have to absolutely dominate this series. I think uh, we talked about Victor Hedman. Uh, defensively, if you look into it, he has... He has a dropping off ever so slightly in the defensive end. Still an elite offensive defenseman. Even a guy like Steven Samkos does most of his damage on the power play now. But you're looking at guys like Braden Point once again, who is an elite playoff talent to step up, like you said, Darius Sorelli. But for me, Nikita Kucherov has to be that guy. He's going to need to be like a two-point-per-game player for this to go all in Tampa's way. We know Tampa still has, you know, their their third lines. Guys like Nick Paul, who he might even be on the first line now. Guys, Tanner you know, who knows if he's going to actually do anything this year. It'll be super interesting to see. Nikita Kucherov, to me, is is that guy. But who do you guys think is going to be the go-to guy in Florida this year? Do you think they, they go back to Kuchuk? Or is Barkov really going to um, show his stuff this year? I think it'll be, like, split. I, I think, like, Paul Maurice won't lean on one guy or the other. I think he'll sort of even the load between the two guys, like Kuchuk and Barkov. Of course. Yeah, I think it's similar to Matt's take. I think he's going to have to find a way to to balance that out because you'll get into a situation where I think with Tampa, we've seen it, maybe not so much last year, but they can kind of pinpoint guys. Like I keep using the Leafs as an example, but Matthews or Marner and take them off the board. So unless you kind of spread that around, I think they'll run into trouble in this specific matchup at least. Yeah. And speaking on, on Matthew Kuchuk, he did have a little bit of a slow season to start, um, but uh, he did turn that around 88 points in 80 games. But I think after like the, the all-star break, he was, fucking unbelievable um and we we already know what he did in the playoffs last year the most clutch player in those playoffs um he had 24 points in 20 games and how many of those were were either time clutch tying goals insurance markers or go-ahead goals right um alex barkham on the other hand uh we know we know what he does he's more uh well putting up points 80 points 73 games this year he's an elite defensive center as we know but in the in the playoffs last year 16 points 21 games only five goals so maybe you're hoping for more out of Barkov this year than you got uh, last year with the Florida Panthers. Now, switching back to Nikita Kucherov, we already know how elite his um, regular season was. Uh, 144 points in 81 games, which is some crazy shit. But in the playoffs, he does the same kind of things, man. Um, last year, he had he was a point per game. Before that, he's always he's always been over a point per game player. He's going to be crazy with them. But I think another thing for Tampa's mentioning, how can Steven Stamkos do in these playoffs? We know what Steven Stamkos is. He's a free agent this year as well. So could this, do you guys think this could be Stamkos' last playoff run with Tampa Bay? It's it's so hard to say. Like, I think he'll stay in Tampa Bay. Uh, but he, he's still relatively young, right? What, 34? Uh, 30. something, something in there, 33 maybe, yeah. 
He's still an effective player, like easily an effective yeah. player. It's just yeah. Yeah, and it, it's not like Tampa's gonna drop off either too. So no, I don't think this is his last run. Think he gets a nice extension there, remains captain. I, th I think so. Yeah, because you, for what he's done for that franchise, like to do him wrong would leave a, like a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Even if you're not a Lightning fan, like you can still respect what Steven Stamkos has done. I think they personally, based on what happened earlier this season, they've already done him wrong, and I think he's riding out the season. And I think he will, he might move on after this season. I'm gonna go with that side of things. I think he will move on from the Lightning after this year. Yeah, an interesting thing about Stamkos is if you look at his breakdown between his even strength goals and assists versus power play goals and assists, it's literally down the middle. So he's yeah. definitely much more of a power play uh, player nowadays, which is still valuable. But guys, um, this series is definitely hard to predict, uh, I think. But Darius, what do you see the outcome being of the Battle of Florida Part 2? This might be shocking to some. And I think it's going to be a very interesting matchup. I, I, I don't like a lot of things in this series because one team matches up very well against, let's say Florida matches up in one area way better than in Tampa and then the opposite in a different area, area right? So I'm going to go with Tampa Bay winning this series in seven games. It's going to go the distance, and I think the Lightning are going to beat the Florida Panthers in seven. Okay, Matt? It's it's going to be uh, a head game battle, mind game battle, if you if you will, between Maurice and John Cooper, and Paul Maurice will succeed and go on to round two, and I'll take the Florida Panthers in six games. I'm going to take the Florida Panthers, not in six games, but seven games. I, I agree with you, Darius. I think it does go the distance, but I think Florida knows now like what it takes to win because they've gone to those Cup finals. Yep. They've been through the injuries, the hardships, all that stuff, and I think. Uh, Tampa isn't just going to go away. They didn't go away against the Leafs too easily. I know it was six games, but it was still a tough series. And um, I think Tampa Bay, you know, they they said it in that uh, Cup Finals against Colorado that that was the last run with that group. I think this could be another rendition of another last run with this group because, like we talked about, Steven Samkos, we don't know what's going to happen there. Sergachev is, is hurt. I think him being back could swing me towards picking Tampa Bay, but I think the Florida Panthers will end up taking this in seven games and moving on to the next round. So with that being said, we know this, this series is going to be epic. Stay tuned on the GritCast for more playoffs series. We're going to have them all uploaded. Take care and enjoy the playoffs, man. For more content, visit our YouTube channel and check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Don't forget to follow the guys on social media at Matt underscore Mondays, at Nick Laflame, and at Darius Dominguez.